project was made for the winter 2020 and it's only the demo. Oh, you son of a. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a demo? I didn't see it. Oh, it says demo for f sakes. Oh, I didn't read it. Hey guys and girls, it's Panda Bomb. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are playing the elevator game with cat girls. Now, for all my furry friends out there, who loves a bit of a cat girl action this is the game for you all of the girls she have cat ears for some uncanny reason and on the description of the game it says Asahi's girlfriend Kiran disappeared in weird circumstances will the cat girls be able to reunite I do not know who Asari is or Kiran um, and are they both cat girls I don't know the elevator game with Kekos is a horror visual novel inspired by the Korean urban legend Elevator to Another World. So it's it's going to be a long-ish game, a lot of reading. If you're into that, let's join it. Let's jump into an little. If you're into that, let's join me. Jump into that scary scary game, uh, and I guess we can just start. Oh shit, my my headphones came off. <laughs> it's cold winter night. You, you know, okay. For some of these reading games, I think I need to put on some sort of voice. Oh, someone's walking. Snow started to fall a couple of hours ago. So the city is littered with a layer of white fluff. White fluff is the worst way to describe snow. <laughs> it crunches under our feet as we walk down the street. Ta-da, we're here, Karen said. It's weird how the, the name of the person isn't on top of the speech box. Oh, what? Are they in a dome? It looks like they're in a dome. I look up to the to inspect the tall building before us. It's past midnight, so it's to be expected that most people living here should be asleep by now. Naturally, that also explains why barely any of the windows show illumination coming from the inside. Considering what we're here for, it only adds to the creepiness of the situation. What are they here for? I've never been a fan of dark places. That didn't change even when I got my feline features. You'd think that being able to see so much more clearly in the dark would make darkness less scary, wouldn't you? Trouble is, I hear so many, many more little sounds that I couldn't make out before too. And since I'm not sure what all of them are, the dark's every bit as creepy as it was before. Maybe even more so. What What do you mean by she, she just became a cat girl? How does this work? Can I become a cat boy? So that's the cat girl fairy friends, beware. Uh, so we are... So uh, we are what? Who's first of all? Who's Asari? Asari is the left one, the the goth chick, and uh, the the opposite of goth is the other girl, the cutesy one. Finally, a response. I thought you were starting to give me the silent treatment again. It's a fault of mine and one I'm not too proud of. I tend to get lost in my own head sometimes. Okay, the person speaking is a is Asari, um, the the goth chick. Well, quite often, really. Thankfully, Kieran is fairly used to it by now. Kiran's a beer, by the way. What, they're both beers? Asahi and Kiran. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, let's show the beers on, on screen. Asahi and Kiran B. I, I swear, Kiran, of all the buildings in the city, you, had, you just had to choose one which seems super creepy. This has to be the sole residential building in the whole office district. Oh, but you know, it could have been any building this one is perfect and by perfect you mean meeting the conditions and being less than 10 miles away from our homes or are you enjoying our walk to this in the snow so much to uh snow together so much uh that you would like to prowl around aimlessly for another hour because i don't know about you but i'm really starting to feel cold hmm, hmm. what was your plan for me to for me to need you to warm me up afterwards you could have said something oh, sorry oh shit. this is turning into something now this is turning into something else now this is getting really furry uh, i just stared at her not really sure what to say there's no winning with kieran when she gets all sly like this actually this isn't furry i, I apologize this isn't furry at all this is cat girls this is a completely different thing right does it matter as much as I hate to admit it, it's one of the things I actually like about her. Why did I sign up for this again? She's kind of got this Daria vibe, by the way. Because you love me. Oh, so they are dating. Ah, yes. Thank you for reminding me of that questionable fact. Say, do you feel 
Oh, do you get the feeling like someone is manipulating someone else for their advantage over here? <laughs> <laughs> nah, just me. Ah, oh, come on, don't be like that. You know I'm happy for you to decide to come with me. I'll make it up to you, I promise. How? <laughs> God dang it! This is, this is supposed to be like kid-friendly channel. Um, I stared at her for a moment longer before I sighed. I really can't argue with her. No way she's looking at me like that. Like what? I had a slight crush on this girl for the longest time and never expected one day to find out that the attention was mutual. Oh, that's nice. The fact that we managed to actually get together still feels so unreal sometimes. If it weren't for the fact that the change affected her too, it would have never come to this. Okay, okay, so there's this underlying story about them turning into cat girls. So I'll, I'll probably get to that later. As much as I disliked it in the beginning, it made me feel like an outcast among my former peers. After all, our shared experience allowed me to be there for her when she needed it most. It's a memory I'm always going to cherish. For that I'm sure. I breathed warmly on my hands, rubbed them together and then jammed them deep in my pockets. It's not much, but hopefully it will keep help keep them feeling in what? Help keep some feeling in my fingertips. It's enough to let me focus on things in here and now, at least rather than just hold out how cold it is. I said it before and I'll say it again. You get provoked way too easily. Hmm? You're doing all of this because of the bet with Morgan, aren't you? Oh sure, that's one of the reasons. But that's not the only one. I'm doing it because it's fun. Fun? Can you, you've seen the forums. No single person out there ever said it was a good idea. Ah yes, all those fairy tale stories. Quite tragic, really. Come on, you're not about to tell me you honestly believe those. So you mean you don't? Seriously, girl, we live in the real world. Spooky, scary skeletons don't just pop out of nowhere because someone decided to be an idiot and press some buttons a certain way. Oh, is that how it works? I can't believe you of all people are still saying that strange, unexplained things didn't happen. I mean, you did look in the mirror this morning, right? This, 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 and that is that. So you don't believe this will actually work? Remind me while we're here again. Some exposition coming, guys. We are here to prove a point. Namely, that Morgan can suck it. <sighs> I honestly can't believe I let you drag me into this. Chill Asahi, we suffered the cold for a while longer. Nothing happens and then Morgan owes me 50 bucks. 50 bucks that will treat us to a nice dinner together. I suppose a dinner with you is pretty good incentive. See, I knew you'd come around. That being said, wish me luck and all that jazz. I'll be right back. Oh, she's going in there alone. Dang, son. Asahi, boy. Asahi, black bee. You gotta go in there. Kidding? What? I'm the one who should be getting cold feet here, not you. Just, you remember all the rules, right? Stay safe, okay? Asa-chan, be realistic about this. What's an elevator gonna do? Bite me? You could always get stuck. That's a realistic possibility, if anything. I'm sure you'll figure it out if I do. Now be sure to stay away from the building since we'll be breaking those majestic rules otherwise. Right. See you in a bit. So off she goes into the building, into the unknown. I stare as Kieran approaches the building's entrance, presses one of the intercom buttons and a moment later pushes the door open. How does she convince people to trust her so quickly to let her into the building like that? I was going to ask, how'd she get in? She's gone from my sight before I knew it. I faint click as the door closes behind her. There's a feeling of unease pulling in my stomach, all of this being a bad idea. Probably the worst we've had yet, just screams in my head. I'm so going to give Morgan a piece of my own mind once all of this is over. It's not like I can really do much about it now. However, if I were to go after my girlfriend saying I've suddenly changed my mind, it would undoubtedly make her angry. How we stuck out of our houses through the window without our parents knowing just to go through with all of this. If I had a problem with this whole crazy idea, I should have said something way earlier. It's too late now. Oh, so it's uh, 13 past. I wrap my fingers around my phone and I pull it from my pocket. She's got really long nails, by the way. As I do so, I see the screen shows uh, 13 past 12 a.m. 12, 13 a.m. at least. 
It took us around an hour to walk here, and while I dreaded us even being here in the first place, I also not, I'm also not looking forward to walking all the way back, especially when it's bound to get colder as the night goes on. Perhaps we could use those 50 bucks to get a ride home instead of a meal. Yeah, if, it, if things only work that way. Yo, oh, that's a vending machine. With another sigh, I turn around and walk to, towards a small park located in the middle of this golf second district. I don't know why part of it is a play playground. There can't be many kids here in the day, can there? But it is, and there's a slide as well as a pair of swings. It'll most likely freeze my ass off if I sit on it, though that would let me lift my feet off the ground for a bit, the cold snowy ground. These swings are really like rustic and old. I've decided to sit down on the nearest one. Just like that, the uneasy feeling of having entered a, lim a liminal space hits me making the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. One's mind usually associates playground with children, laughter, movement, and life in general. It's what they're designed for after all. So when you get to experience the total opposite of that, when you find yourself sitting in an empty, childless playground in the middle of the night, it doesn't feel right. Your mind associates it with something being off, something being wrong. Why are you here, Asahi? In a place you shouldn't be. Sometimes I ask myself that. <laughs> in the most random places too uh but i can understand where she is coming from this is a very very nasty looking place absent-mindedly my gaze wanders something at the other side of the street catches my attention it's a vending machine i happen to have a bit of change with me and the idea of getting something hot to drink is suddenly a very alluring temptation now quick update not update quick um cultural background in, uh or understanding what is this called uh cultural education da -da -da -da! <laughs> uh, in Japan, during winter, their vending machine are able to put out hot drinks, hot coffee, hot soup even, um, and sometimes they even make meals. So this is what this uh, Asahi is uh, talking about. I, I only presume it's in Japan because the names are Japanese and there's vending machines in the middle of nowhere. It will undoubtedly make the waiting out in this cold less pleasant. Unpleasant, I should say. Uh, please say it's a machine that has hot drinks as well as cold ones. Normally there is. I can see the red. No, it goes red when it's uh, hot drinks and blue when it's cold, obviously. Uh, with my mind made up, I get back to my feet, checking the time on more out of habit uh, than actual curiosity. Uh, 14 minutes past 12 a.m. Only a minute passed since Kim disappeared into the building and I'm both surprised and not really. The feeling of time passing slower than usual is normal when you're obsessively waiting for something, even more when, she, when set waiting is physically uncomfortable. Oh, it's no, it's Japanese. I was going to say it's Korean, but it's always oh, not. Uh, make my way towards the vending machine without a second thought. Am I going to get jump scared? F no. For some reason, I feel like a jump scare is happening. I don't know why. To my relief, its glowing buttons do indeed hold the promise of a hot drink. Good. Uh, coffee, man. Shit, boy. Just gotta stay away. Nothing sounds better than a hot can of coffee right now. Not only will it help me survive the cold, it's also bound to give me an energy boost, one I could use for both the waiting and the upcoming inevitable journey all the way back home. I can't read. I can't read it, but I CBF. Uh, it costs a little more than I expected, and I won't have enough to get a second can. So there goes the idea of treating Kieran to a nice warm drink for the walk home. Oh well, she'll survive, and it's her fault that we'd be walking back through the snow. The can feels warm and heavily in my hands. I wipe my hands around it. Enjoy a few moments of bliss as the heat warms my fingers. Oh, shit. What the fuck? <laughs> the opening of the can scared me. I better turn my, my volume is way too high. Okay, carefully, oh, carefully, I pry the edges of the pull tab up with a nail so I can get my fingers underneath and then pull it open with a sharp hiss. I'm really careful when it, uh, with how I open cans after carelessly breaking it out once. The memory of that still makes me shudder. I shiver trying to fight down the suddenly memory of Karen torturously dragging her nails against the blackboard in my class. What the f***? A wicked smile painting her lips as she held my gaze. I wish I could somehow control these unwanted thoughts sometimes. Alas, my brain likes to torture me instead. The smell of beverage reaches my nose, grounding me back into reality. I take a small sip, instantly happy with the taste. Being able to drink anything warm feels like a godsend right now. Satisfied, at least momentarily, I make my way back to the playground, intending to sit back on the spot I took up before.
I reached the swing and settled back in. As I glanced up again at the building, Karen slipped into minutes ago. What do you see? Uh oh, uh oh. My blood suddenly runs cold. What do I see? A sense of sun panic swarms my mind as I try to make sense of what I'm seeing. A building that's dead to the world, of all pitch black with none of the lights shining through the windows anymore. Could all the residents have gone to sleep in the meantime? That's close to impossible and I know it. A power outage? Wait, all, all the lights are off. I quickly turn around and look at the other buildings surrounding me. All of them seem the same as when we arrived with a bright window still present here and there. So surely that can't be it. If the power was cut off, it would affect the whole street, wouldn't it? Or even several streets. Almost spilling my drink, I hesitated, hastily reached for the phone in my pocket. Another minute passed. Oh, we're backwards! Huh? I blinked, then closed my eyes, shuffled a moment, certain that something was wrong with my eyesight. The time couldn't have gone backwards. Eh? A sense of relief floods me as I quickly open my eyes again. It must have been a trick of the light before, or perhaps there was a glitch with my phone display? Perhaps there's something wrong with me. Remembering what made me reach for my phone in the first place, I raise my head to look at the building before me once more. I only to see it is in its previous state. The lights are black on. Oh, back on, sorry. As if they were never gone to begin with. The knees in my stomach stays though. I know what I saw. I'm pretty sure I couldn't have imagined it. It's been five minutes since Karen went into the building. Is that enough to ride through a bunch of floors? Would she be mad if I called her so soon? Dwelling on it suddenly feels stupid. No, oh, she's calling. I open up the call app on my phone and there's her name at the top of the history. She called me just a couple of hours ago to confirm our plans for tonight. Admittedly, her name is also there for the call before that and the one before and... Okay, I, I chat to her a lot. So one more call now can't hurt, right? It's been like five minutes. I hit the redial button. I should have expected the call wouldn't connect. If she's still inside of the elevator, that probably isn't any reception in there, is there? So what option does that leave me with? Going in after her? Waiting for another 5 minutes? So what's the challenge? I don't know what the challenge is. I stared at the building more uh, before me intently, afraid to avert my eyes anymore. It's like I'm hopeful my gaze, my constant observation alone will make the light stay. I'm scared of the situation repeating itself. Sometime later, I realize that I've spent so long just holding my can and fretting about Karen. That my drink has gone from a nice hot drink to, well, undrinkable. Some drinks are not meant to be just kinda warm and this is one of them. Really? I can drink kinda warm coffee any day. At least it kept my hands from freezing, I guess. 10 minutes pass. I feel only more cold and helpless. Why can't Karen just come out of the building now as if nothing has happened and laugh at me for worrying too much? No answer. I call her again for good measure. Surprisingly, the call does go through this time. Hello? Dude, was she crying or laughing? I'm not prepared for what I hear. A woman laughing on the other end. There's something about it that disturbed me to the very core. It's definitely not Karen's voice. Or is it? All of a sudden, realization hits me. Morgan, the bet, everything. Now this, none of it could possibly be real. All of this has to be a prank arranged by my classmates. And whether Karen is in on it. She wouldn't do this to me, would she? The image of her wickedly smiling, amused face persistently pops up in my mind again. Confusion turns into anger. Before I know it, I'm on my feet, already marching to the building, de determination boiling inside of me. She's pissed, yo! Asahi is pissed! There's an obstacle before I can enter in, though, as I obviously don't have a key to the entrance door. What kind of excuse will be plausible at this t sort of hour? I stabbed at a button that I think Karen pressed and almost immediately regret it. What if I pressed the wrong button? What if I pressed the right one and sound stupid when the other person asks who's there? What if? To my surprise, there's a click from the intercom, and then a buzz as I'm um, let in without a single word being spoken. Huh? So Kieran didn't have this sweet talk anyone. I try not to dwell on the unexpected invitation as I struggle off, off on luck. Bad luck or good luck? As soon as the door closed behind me, it occurs to me just how dark the inside of the building is. I know it's the middle of the night, but 
I'm not sure whether such a complete lack of light is normal. People live here after all. There should be some sign of life. Buildings usually have at least a few lights on inside, don't they? It's unsettling, although it doesn't make me f as nervous as it used to. I know that my vision is going to adjust to the dark in a moment, letting me navigate the place easily. I'm able to see a lot better in the dark compared to when I was completely human, but it doesn't work instantly. As I take a few f hesitant steps into the building, the lights flicker on with a harsh buzz. Of course I'm being such an idiot. There, is, there are automatic lights in here. They come on when people move. Totally ordinary. It's just that I've never been in this building before. It stands to reason that it feels un unusually creepy to me, right? Especially if I think about why I'm currently here. I still don't know what the challenge is, so I'm very, very curious. And it's so industrial looking, this building. What the f***? All that considered, it feels longer for me to reach the end of the hallway than it probably should. It's a dangerous time to let your mind wander into places nobody sane would want it wandering to. At least the building inside is noticeably warmer than the outdoors. It makes the whole situation slightly easier to bear. My hands and feet almost started to freeze off in the meantime. The next thing I know, I stand before the elevator door, rooted to the ground, with the sudden sensation of someone watching me. Look behind, bitch. let's do it! Come at me, yo! Yo! Abruptly, I turn around, more panic exploding inside of me, as the automated light pricks, picks that exact moment to cut out. My first instinct is to get my phone, let it illuminate the darkness of the corridor, and God knows what else is inhibiting it currently. Looks like nothing, man. There's nothing. Nothing I can able to see anyways, it's just an empty corridor, a roll of closed doors along each side. Seemingly the same as when I first entered it, there's nobody there. I don't feel any less on the edge when I turn back in the other direction. Bearing my back to all of that space again, pressing the elevator button as quickly as I can find it. A distant sound of machinery starts to pierce the unnerving silence, followed by a hum which indicates that the elevator is in motion. It's clearly on a different floor, so I wait for it to descend. Taking a deep breath, I try to calm myself. It feels like an eternity for the thing to arrive. I thought this was a 20 minute game, what the f***? The doors finally slide apart with a slight scraping sound, and the small compartment finally opens up before me, completely empty. I'm not sure whether I should be surprised or not. A part of me hoped it wouldn't have come to this, while another already expected for things to turn out this way. Guess it's my turn to enter, eh? At this point, I decide to do the only sensible thing I can think of doing. Get into the elevator, ascend to the highest floor, and make my way down the stairs all in hope of stumbling upon Kieran, possibly hiding from me on one of those floors. If only things turn out that easy. Oh sh it's gonna hit the fan, yo! What? What? Wait. The project was made for the winter 2020 and it's only the demo. Oh, you son of a- <laughs> Is that a demo? I didn't see it. Oh, it says demo for fuck's sakes. Oh, I didn't read it. It says on the website, um, this is the demo version of the game that was made for the Winter VN Jam. I don't know what Winter VN Jam shows the first. It shows the first 20 minutes of gameplay. Dang it. Oh, so getting into the story too. Oh, shit. I didn't even save it. Oh. Oh, no bread studio got me. Oh, that's the horror. Oh, oh, that was a horror of the game. <laughs> got me. Man, um, okay, look, you know what? I'm gonna put this as part one. So the next time I get this game going, um, I'll, I'll have it as part two and it'll continue from that point onwards. So, uh, yeah, that was the what was this? The elevator with cat girls. So, a few things has piqued my interest. Obviously, number one, what the are the cat girls? I don't know what where did that come from. What that has that contributed to the story other than the fact that they got kind of like cute little ears happening and, and nicely drawn. So that, there must be a reason why and uh, what happens when she gets in the elevator and what type of dare did they take on. Some Something about pressing buttons in a certain combination, maybe like a boogeyman will appear. But yeah, it's it's starting It's starting to kind of build up and yeah, it's, it's interesting. I like it. I like the storytelling. I like how well it's written. I like the character building. And uh, No Bread Studio, you're doing very well. Uh, screw you for 
<laughs> no, it's my fault. It's my fault. I thought it was a whole game, 20 minutes. Anyways, if you like that video, please smash the button, like button. If you dislike it, tickle the dislike button. Leave a comment and tell me what you thought of the story so far and whether you're hankering for the ending to this game. I, I need to somehow follow. I might have to follow, hit the follow button. I'll follow them so that I know that the game is coming out and I'll uh, have a part 2 and part 3 and an ending for this game. I can only presume it's going to be a really big one hour long gameplay. Yeah, and if you haven't already subscribed, consider subscribing. I play a lot of horror games and I post three times a week. Otherwise, you guys have been amazing. You should keep smiling and I'll see you in the next one. A Peace!